guys good afternoon welcome back to my youtube channel this is miss henderson so today we are doing something exciting today we are going to be um talking about a few slides on powerpoint slides on um ekg um cardiac rhythms so again well welcome to my channel please um click subscribe please drop your comments below and let me know what other videos you like me to um, provide you with. So let's dive into the uh, questions and PowerPoints. So the first slide we have here on the PowerPoint presentation, we have the first question that states that atrial dysrhythmias are characterized by A. Y QRS complex, B, prolonged PR intervals, C, absence or abnormal P waves, D, periods of asystole. So take a moment and take a minute to um, see if you can come up with the answer for this question. And then I'll give you the answer. So the correct answer for question number one will be absent or abnormal P waves. That's the correct answer for question one. I think I can bold it. I can try to bold it. I don't know. Or maybe put it into a different color so you could see the answer if that works better. All right. So C is the correct answer for question one. Let's move on to question number two. Question number two states, the monitor tech notifies you that the patient is asystole on the monitor. Your first action is to, now think about this question. If you are an RN and you're working on the um, a cardiac unit, or maybe you're working in the um, ICU and um, one of your um, CNAs or one of your technicians come and say, hey, nurse, that, you know, the monitoring is showing that the patient is, is in a Sicily. So what is your first action as a nurse? What would you do? Call a code. I know a lot of people will choose that answer. Call a code assess the patient, C, call the uh, rapid response team, or look at the monitor. So what would be your action, your initial action? Definitely, you want to assess the patient first. Um, I mean, calling a code is good, but then it could be a false response. So a lot of times, you know, these monitors, they, you know, maybe you have to troubleshoot something. Maybe the machine is not working. It's artifacts. So, you know, maybe a wire or there's a disconnection with the um, port. So you always want to assess your patient. That's the first thing you want to do. Assess your patient. After you assess your patient, and you came up with your clinical findings, then you can call the um, code. But you always want to assess your patient. I'll put it into a different color, the answer. So B will be the correct answer for question number two. Question number three. In a normal heart, the primary pacemaker is the A. A V node, B S A node, C Purkinje fibers, left bundle branch. So take a moment and see if you could come up with the answer for question number three. It's a very very easy question. Um, if you took anatomy or physiology, any course that they will teach you the S A node. So the SA node will be the correct answer. That's considered the um the pacemaker of the heart, the SA node. That's where um most of the um 
the rhythms that generates the electrical activities of the heart essay note and I am going to bold this so you have it. Question number four. The P wave on the EKG corresponds to which of the following electrical events? Take a moment and think about it. Is it ventricular depolarization? Is it atrial depolarization? Is it atrial repolarization? Or is it failure to capture? So take a moment and think about this question. See what answer you'll come up with. And I'll give you the answer. So the correct answer for question number four will be atrial depolarization. That's the correct answer for this question. All right, let's look at another question. Question number five. The key characteristic of second degree heart block type one winky back is the presence of, take a moment and think about it, is it 2P waves for every QRS complex? Is it PR intervals greater than 0 0.20 seconds? Is it progressive, a progressive prolongation of PR intervals? Or is it a slow ventricular rate? So take a moment and think about this question. It's not that difficult. And see if you could come up with the answer. So that moment is up and the correct answer is a progressive prolongation of PR intervals. That's the um, correct answer for that question and I have bolded it. Question number six. Once V-fib has been identified, you should, now what should you do? Give epinephrine? Give atropine, initiate pacing, or defibrillate your patient, or defibrillation. So once you notice V-fib has been identified, what is your intervention as a nurse? So take a moment and think about it. The correct answer is D, defibrillation. That will be the correct answer for this question. I just have a few more slides. I don't have that much, but let's look at question seven. The QRS of an EKG corresponds to which if which of the following events in the heart? The QRS on an EKG corresponds to which of the following of the following events in the heart. Question number seven. Is it ventricular depolarization? B, ventricular repolarization? C, atrial repolarization? D, atrial depolarization? So take a moment and think about that answer. The correct answer will be ventricular depolarization. I don't know if I can block kind of bold it so you could have it. Yes, I can certainly bold it. I'll try to use a different color. That's the correct answer. All right, let's look at question eight. Which of the following would be appropriate indication for transcutaneous pacing? So now you know the normal heart rate is 60 to 100. And if a patient comes in, in with a heart rate of 20 or 30, obviously they're in sinus bradycardia. So what 
would be the um, indication. Is this, think about this question. Is it a systematic sinus bradycardia, normal sinus rhythms with hypotension and shock, complete heart block with pulmonary edema? D, prolonged asystole. So what would be the indications for um, transcutaneous pacing, putting in a pacemaker? Obviously, we don't do that. It's the doctors that does that. So will be the correct answer will be C, completes heart block with pulmonary edema. That's the correct answer for this question. I am going to try to bold it, see. There you have it. Okay, so we have one or two more questions. Question number nine, which of the following would be the most appropriate initial interventions if your patient noted to be in supraventricular tachycardia at a rate of 170. Wow, that's high. That is high. What would you do? So look at the answer. Perform carotid massage. Call a code, assess the vital signs and symptoms, obtain a 12 lead EKG. So that moment is up and the correct answer is the assess the vital signs and symptoms. You always, as a nurse, I've learned this in fundamentals of nursing, you always want to assess your patient. Anytime there is something going on or a tech technician or your CNA come and tell you, you always want to start with assessment and getting the vital signs and um, assessing the presenting symptoms of the patient. Okay, guys, this is the last question. Question number 10. The following tacti arrhythmias may be called supraventricular tachycardia except atrial Atrial tachycardia, junctional tachycardia, ventricular tachycardia, sinus tachycardia. So think about this question. The following tachyarrhythmias may be called supraventricular tachycardia, except. So the correct answer is ventricular tachycardia. That's the correct answer this question and I kind of bold it for you there you go you have it so guys these are some EKG questions and um you can probably find some of these questions on the NCLEX exam you can find some on CNA's exam or if you're taking any type of EKG course or anatomy of physiology you can find these questions Thank you so much for um, tuning in to this channel. And if you like these types of content and these types of video, kindly consider subscribing to my channel. Please like and share and please drop your comments below. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the other one. Bye for now.